Welcome back to another Use Your Fantasy Wildcard Team video and podcast, this time at a match day 11, the first leg of the semi-finals where all yellow cards are reset. I'll be talking about the best 50-man squad on the wildcard chip and I'll also be releasing a best limitless team. But to be quite frank, it's so easy to build a team and still have a lot of money in the bank. So the limitless isn't very useful at this stage of the competition and it won't be for the rest of the campaign. But in that particular video and podcast, I'll also provide all the latest injury updates and suspensions, everything you need to know out of match day 11. Be sure to smash the like button of this video and subscribe for new. Let's get this over 200 likes on YouTube and let's keep on pushing towards 25 foul subscribers and beyond. But without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Lunin has done an incredible job filling in for Thibaut Courtois, who's been injured for the majority of this season. But Real Madrid have a fully fit squad now. Ferla Mendy and Thibaut Courtois were the only doubts heading into this weekend, but they've both been included in the matchday squad against Bayern Munich for the Tuesday Champions League clash in the semi-final. So it's only a matter of time before Courtois reclaims that number one spot. So Lunin might be a very short-term option, but so long as he's in that team playing for Real Madrid, I think he's the best goalkeeper in UCL Fantasy. And he also happens to be very cheap because he tends to be the second choice, but he's done a great job this season and he could even fight Courtois for the number one spot. But ultimately, I think the Belgian will win that battle and Lunin will be a very short-term option. Now, the second pick I'm going to go for, for the goalkeepers, I mean, look, it's a very simple one, I think, because you've got Donnarumma, you've got Manuel Neuer, but in my opinion, it's very simple to go for a cheap option from Borussia Dortmund in Kobol, who has been phenomenal. He actually has the most points of any goalkeeper in UCL Fantasy this season with 44. And even if you back PSG to go through, I'd rather have Kobol than Donnarumma. And you have plenty of transfers to make things right going into the final. So you get free transfers for the second leg of the semi-finals in match day 12 and five free transfers for match day 13 to round off UCL Fantasy. So these two goalkeepers might be very short term and I do recognize that and if you just want to go for goalkeepers that will be a bit longer term maybe Donnarumma is the pick you want to go for but I wouldn't rule out Dortmund against PSG Dortmund have more heritage in this competition and they've been in decent form overall in the last couple of months so Lunen and Kobel are the two choices in goal but I do recognize that they're not the most long-term picks which you definitely want to have with your goalkeepers it's very important to trust your instincts and back your gut and make predictions when you're making transfers or building a wildcard team in the knockout stages. So if you back Paris Saint-Germain to go through, you'd probably want to go for two PSG defenders, even though they're away from home for the first leg. And that's one difference between the wildcard and the limitless, where you just focus entirely on this match day only with that chip in particular. And you might want to load up on more Dortmund players or maybe even buy Munich and favor the home teams or maybe fancy an upset, despite the fact that they could go out at the very end but Marquinhos is very good for ball recoveries he's probably the best PSG defender on paper because of that reason he's got a bit of goal for it as well he scored some very crucial goals for Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League over the last couple of years so Marquinhos for me is probably the best PSG defender but there's also another one who's just come back from a suspension for the second leg and he made a big difference in that match against Barcelona and that's Hakimi and he's the second highest scoring defender only behind Mats Hummels Marquinhos is in third place as well so I think these two are good picks on the wild card I personally back Paris Saint-Germain to reach the final but I think it'll be a very close game we saw that in the group of death when these two teams faced each other and Dortmund won at home whilst Paris Saint-Germain won the other game so I think it'll be a very close game and decided by fine margins but I'm personally going for these two defenders alongside the top scoring UCL fantasy defender in Mats Hummels but he's currently in injury doubt and it's probably only going to be a couple of days he should be available for the Wednesday but it's not set in stone so keep your eyes peeled for Mats Hummels and Matson, who are both possibly out for the Wednesday game against Paris Saint-Germain. Now we have two defender slots left and it doesn't look great if I'm being completely honest. A lot of Man City and Arsenal defenders looked very promising but they've both been eliminated and that's another reason why the Limitless isn't very appealing right now because as you'll see with this team if you played UCL Fantasy from the beginning you built up some team value you could have one, two, three possibly even four million left in the bank after building the wildcard team or even the Limitless but I'm going to go for Real Madrid defender and double up on Los Merengues and go for Carvajal. I'm not a big fan of most Real Madrid defenders. I think Rudiger was a great option whilst at Chelsea with a lot of ball recoveries, but he hasn't really done it at Real Madrid. He's been great for them. He put in a colossal performance against Man City, but in terms of UCL fantasy points, 
not really that impressive. So I think Carvalho with the assist potential is the one I'd go for. And to cover Bayern Munich defensively, I actually would go for Eric Dyer, who's very cheap, but that's not really too relevant because of the budget issue that I mentioned. But in home matches, he's got seven points in both games against Lazio and Arsenal. And with Bayern Munich, do I expect him to keep a clean sheet against Real Madrid, home or away? Probably not. But because Bayern Munich are at home for the first leg, I'd probably go for Eric Dyer here, but it's not something that's absolutely set in stone. And if you want to go for a more attacking option, maybe Alfonso Davis, who is now back from suspension, might be your cup of tea. But this defensive five might not look the best. And you could even go for Matson instead of one of Carvajal or Eric Dyer. I wouldn't particularly mind that. And if I were to make a change personally and Matson is back, I think that's what I'd go for. Get rid of Eric Dyer and go for Matson. And if you are back in Bayern Munich to win the home game, get rid of Carvajal instead. But of course, it's all about balance. And on the wild card, when you also have to think about match day 11, 12 and 13, not just the match day right in front of you, that's where things can get a bit complicated. And on the Limitless, I'll show you a different approach where I load up on certain teams defensively, like Borussia Dortmund. But I have to say, Matson in isolation is a better choice than Eric Dyer. But on the wild card, that's where things get a bit tricky. And I think I'm going to stick with Eric Dyer and go for that balance and kind of cover all bases just in case Bayern Munich go through. But it's worth mentioning Bayern Munich have 11 injury doubts and players who are officially ruled out. So it's not looking good for them whilst Real Madrid have a fully fit squad. So I think Real Madrid are going to reach the final and win it. But let's wait and see. Football is full of surprises. But I have to say Real Madrid winning the Champions League for a 15th time wouldn't be one of them. It goes without saying that Bellingham is essential at this stage of the competition. There's no doubt about that. He has been underwhelming in recent weeks and months for Real Madrid in terms of goals and assists. Of course, he did score that winner in El Clasico, but I do think his first half of the season was incredible. And since the injuries, he has dropped a little bit. But in UCL Fantasy, I can't really think of any midfielder who really compares to him. You had Foden and Saka who were doing really well this season, but they're both out of the competition. So Bellingham, for me, is an absolute must-have and probably the best Real Madrid midfielder and asset that they have, although Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo are certainly good options in the forward line. Now, in terms of the midfielders, I'm not a big fan of Leroy Sane this season. He's been very inconsistent in all competitions. I still think he hasn't scored in almost 30 games, which is incredible. And Jamal Musiala is a major doubt for the first leg against Real Madrid. He could be out for a couple of weeks. Hopefully that's not the case, but it's not looking too good. And we'll see the lineups for Bayern Munich versus Real Madrid tomorrow during the deadline stream. So be sure to tune in for that as well. But I'm going for Joshua Kimmich, who got 11 points against Arsenal, scoring the winning goal to put them through to the semi-final. Finals and he's averaging the most points of any Bayern Munich midfielder with 5.1 per game and he offers tremendous value as well. So Kimmich for me is a very simple one. And now in terms of PSG midfielders, I think there are two options you have, Vitinha or Zer Emery. And I'd probably go for Zer Emery, but I'm definitely going to concede that Vitinha has the better form. And Zer Emery has been very underwhelming in this calendar year. Not many goals or assists in all competitions. And I also think in the Champions League, Vitinha has been stepping up big time. So that could be a differential you go for as well. Zer Emery is also quite low owned, to be fair, but I think that's probably the way I'd go about it. So if I actually compare the ownership figures, Vitinha has 4% while Zer Emery has 10%. So both of them low ownership, but it will go up by the time we get to the deadline as we're kind of forced to go for the same players as we only have four teams left in the competition. Now to complete this midfield, another 50-50 call is Julian Brandt or Sabitzer. I'm going to go for Sabitzer who's even cheaper and he tends to play even deeper, but his ownership is 2% and he's got even more points than Julian Brandt. And I think Sabitzer is capable of some big returns, especially in home matches. He did it in match day 10 and I think he could do it yet again for at least a home game against Paris Saint-Germain. And finally, to wrap things up, I'm going for a second Real Madrid midfielder in Federico Valverde, who got the Player of the Match award at the Etihad against Man City. And I have to say, I disagree with that. I think Lunin deserved it. He made 11 saves during the 90 minutes, 120 minutes it went to. And he also made two penalty shootout saves. So I think Lunin should have got it. But Valverde is still a decent use of your fantasy option. He's got the old goal or assist in him. He can make a lot of ball recoveries. And I personally think he's Real Madrid's best midfielder, even better than Bellingham. But Bellingham with the goals and assists tends to get the limelight. I think going for both of them in use of your fantasy is the right play. I'm personally backing Madrid to win the Champions League. So it makes sense to load up on Real Madrid, in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of their defenders, even their midfielder assets, except Bellingham, really. But 
I think Real Madrid are still worth loading up on and going for Bellingham, maybe one or two forwards up front as well. That could be the play. But let's complete this team with the three forwards. Harry Kane is the highest scoring player in UCL Fantasy with 63 points and despite all the injury problems that Bayern Munich have with Lima, Upamancana who are doubtful, not to mention Gnabry, Sane, Musiala could be out for a couple of weeks, the same goes for Kingsley Coman, I think Harry Kane can still step up and score some goals even if Bayern Munich are knocked out and in the home game I think Bayern Munich have a chance of winning that particular match but it's not going to be easy and Carlo Ancelotti has an incredible record against Bayern Munich six wins two draws and zero losses the second forward I'm going for is Vinicius Jr who is averaging 5.6 points per game and he's really stepped up in the knockout stages he tends to do really well at this stage of the competition it's quite surprising that for Brazil he hasn't really done it yet but maybe this will be the year for him and Vinicius or Rodrigo take your pick you could even go for both I wouldn't really mind that so much Rodrigo is the only other forward I would actually contemplate or consider apart from this three which speaks for itself Kane Vinicius and Mbappe I think that's by far the best front three it will be very template if you want to go a bit different go for Rodrigo perhaps over Harry Kane but that's definitely going to be a very risky pick to say the least and I wouldn't mind going for Rodrigo over Vinicius because Rodrigo also steps up at this stage of the competition and tends to score the bulk of the goal so that's the 50-man squad on the wild card and it's got a nice balance to it but you might want to load up on certain teams even more so maybe get rid of one or two Bayern Munich players maybe Eric Dyer would be the worst pick out of this 50-man squad and you can triple up on certain defences for example maybe Paris Saint-Germain or Borussia Dortmund but remember you also have to think about match day 12 and match day 13 and that's where things get complicated and I tend to go for a balance on the wild card at this stage of the competition now to wrap things up I'm going to also talk about the captaincy and on the 30th of April on the Tuesday Bayern Munich are at home and I think Harry Kane becomes a great captaincy option as a result now, it's between Bellingham, Kane and Vinicius for the armband. I'm personally going to go for Harry Kane and back him to score in this match. But it's completely up to you. And I'll discuss this in the team selection as well and the deadline stream as I may have different feelings by the time I record those videos and live streams. And for the Wednesday, it's a very tricky one because Mbappe is away from home. He actually blanked back in match day six, I believe, against Borussia Dortmund. So he's not set in stone, but I think Mbappe would be my captain for the second day. He really steps up at this stage of the competition in the quarterfinals and semifinals. So Kane and Mbappe are my current choices, but I'd also consider Bellingham, Vinicius Jr. and maybe a cheeky punt on a Sabitzer or Julian Brandt. But I have to make one final change to this wildcard team as Danny Carvajal is suspended for the first leg of the semi-finals against Bayern Munich. He picked up a yellow card against Man City, his third of the competition, so he will miss the first leg in match day 11. Lucas Vasquez will likely play in his position. You can go for him instead. Maybe even Antonio Rudiger or Ferlan Mendy. I'd pick any single one of them. And at the moment, I'd probably go for Vasquez. I honestly don't really like any of these options. It's between those three. I mean, just take your pick from those. I'd probably go for Rudiger, but once Carvajal is back, he would be my favourite Real Madrid defender, but he will be out for the first leg of the semi-finals. Bear that in mind, this is the final 15-man squad on the wild card that I would recommend, but there are certain picks that you can change about a little bit depending on your preferences. Eric Dyer could be one of them. You can upgrade him to Alfonso Davis or maybe go away from Bayern Munich defensively entirely. Thank you very much for watching this video and listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it, or found useful then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's try to get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 25k subscribers and beyond you can also follow me on twitter and instagram dylan rcm and check all the other links in the description below for the patron championships discord server the ucl fantasy league draft hound as well as spotify and amazon music leave a five-star review on my podcast it'd be greatly appreciated as always i wish you all the best of luck for match day 11 and the rest of the season and i'll see you next time